and welcome to On the Block, where today we're in Bensonhurst, and we're going to be talking to Monsignor David Casado, who's the pastor of St. Athanasius Parish, which also takes in St. Dominic's Church, right? That's One right. parish? One parish. We were merged about a year and a half ago, and it's now St. Athanasius, St. Dominic's Parish here in Bensonhurst. We probably cover most of Bensonhurst if you really look at the <laughs> geography of this neighborhood between here and there. It's a big, big parish. We have about, uh, I say over here, about 2,200 before pandemic on Sunday, and at St. Dominic's about 700. So we're almost, almost 3,000 people on Sunday. Uh, so it's a very big, growing parish, and the growth is tremendous within the Hispanic community. Every Sunday at St. Athanasius, there's three Sunday Masses in Spanish. At St. Dominic's, there's one Spanish Mass. So the largest number of attendants is in the Spanish community. And what you see is like a lot of baptisms within the community. And before pandemic, we were maybe 300, 350 baptisms. It's been a little slow this year, but I think it's going to start coming back again. It's been a very, uh, very, wonderful time to see how this started. It started off with just one Spanish Mass here at St. A's maybe about 20 years ago with maybe about 200 people. Father Gabriel Toro came and he said to me, he said to me, by the time I leave here there'll be 1,500 Spanish people at Mass and he was 100% right. Uh, he grew the community very wonderfully. Well, you, you've been here for 20 years now, oh, right? 20 years. I believe in stability. <laughs> I believe in stability. I don't, I don't like moving. I don't like moving from parish to parish. <laughs> when they throw me out of here, you can't imagine you're going to have to have moving vans. Not one, many. Now, was, it, was, it, was the parish more Italian when you first came it here? Was, it was tremendously Italian and Irish. And uh, I would say at the 9 o'clock mass, weekday mass, there were 100 people every day. And that's diminished but the uh, Hispanic community is, is coming very faithfully to Mass at 7 and 9, and we're about 60 people now at the 9 o'clock Mass. Mm -hmm. Now, where would the Hispanic people come from? Uh, because, you know, you say Hispanic, that's a generic term, but the, the ethnic groups uh, are very different. Tremendous number of Mexicans, tremendous number, but other all over Latin America. And uh, it's very important to celebrate the feasts. Uh, there's every, every month there's another feast. In uh, September, St. Michael. November, St. Martin de Porres. Every month there's another celebration. And of course, December, Guadalupe. So we have a, a great deal of celebrations, novenas, and the, uh, the Spanish community is, is a tremendous growth here. Yeah. You like to get out into the streets too. You like processions and parades, right? Well, you know it. <laughs> and you know what? I'm so lucky as being police chaplain now, I get the uh, police band to lead most of the processions. And they're very gracious and they're very good. They did the Italian procession the other day for Mother Cabrini and uh, it's wonderful. And they make a very fine presence as they lead the procession. They have, that's the other part of my life, you know, being police chaplain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what kind of changes have you had to make to, uh, to your evangelization efforts? Knowing that more Hispanics are coming in, did you have to do some kind of special outreach to them to well, get I, them more involved in the parish? Most important is to have good pastoral associates. And uh, between a Spanish priest to do the mass, now we have Father Edwin Ortiz, who has fit in very well within the community, newly ordained. I mean, he's now he's about two and a half years ordained, but uh, he has fit in very well and he works very well with all the different groups, which is critical. I mean, it's a lot of group work, uh, a lot of group meetings, a lot of prayer group meetings, and Father Edwin does it very well. Secondly, uh, trying to reach out to the neighborhood and finding the Hispanics yeah. in the neighborhood. Yeah. And you know, they come, a lot of them come from different distances to come here, because this was the first parish established in this neighborhood of Bensonhurst to have a Spanish mass. Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of competition? Like you, you hear about some uh, storefront churches trying to proselytize the Hispanic community. Do you have that here, this competition? Uh, tremendous. There's a tremendous effort on the, on the part of storefront churches. And I think we're doing it well, but there's still a lot of them that are pulled to different storefront churches. And that effort has to constantly be at work, trying to constantly reach the people where they're at. One of the greatest tools that we have for evangelization is religious education 
and our school. If you take a look at our school, our school is tremendously diverse and the Hispanics are a large part of the population. I would say right now our school is about 65% Hispanic. Hmm, that's a big change. A big, now, big tell change. me a little bit about St. Dominic's. At one time that was a parish unto itself. Yes. And what was the decision? Why was that made to bring this in and make it one parish? Well, I think it all happened uh, kind of coincidentally. They were in need of a pastor and Father Ron D'Antonio went over as administrator. Mm -hmm. And he was working it out, living here, going back and forth. And from that natural progression, uh, it just kind of came together. And uh, we kind of just put it all together. It was really more of a, a flow. You know, it, it just wasn't like, let's, let's do something. It, from that moment of that transition, when Father Ron went over to now, it just, came together. Mm -hmm. That parish, that church seems to have grown though. I mean, you redid it, right? right. You, we did, we, we did, we did the whole a thing. great renovation and uh, it was a very, very dark church. And now it's a very bright and beautiful worship site. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, it's strong. It's interesting though, you talk about different things. There's an Italian mass there mm. every morning. Mm. Every morning at eight o'clock, Monday to Friday, there's an Italian mass. Find me another parish in this country that has an Italian mass every morning. So there's the real strong remnant uh, of the Italian community. I mean, much older congregation, but they're there faithfully, faithfully every morning. And I had the mass just this morning. They sing hymns, they do all the devotional prayers that I remembered from my youth. Uh, it's just a, a, a very beautiful group that comes together every morning there. And you have a great parish staff between St. Athanasius and St. Dominic's. A lot of enthusiastic people who are involved in this parish. Uh, where do you find these people? How do you keep them involved? I'm gonna tell you something. The only way this parish works, it's not me, and I can tell you it's not me. It's the people that are part of the parish staff in both places. There's a great energy trying to keep things focused and trying to keep things moving. If, if I say, I got an idea, we try it. If they say, we got an idea, we try it. We've tried during pandemic, we did a virtual retreat, which was very successful. And we've tried a lot of creativity. The most important thing is to let things happen. Mm -hmm. Some things will work, some things don't work, but it all works together. We, during the pandemic, we started this food pantry. Amazing. At, at St. Dominic's, there's Hope's Kitchen. Everything went on taking care of the needs of the poor was critical through the whole pandemic and it really worked and it puts the parish out there yeah. in the front of everybody. One of the things that's very interesting about here is Bay Parkway. Bay Parkway is a very heavy traffic street and I think the benefit of this parish is being on Bay Parkway. It's not in a quiet corner somewhere, it's right in the midst of the activity. And I mean, for a long time, there was Bishop Carney High School here. There was uh, the local funeral home until things changed. Uh, but you know, all that brought a tremendous life to this neighborhood here. Now, in addition to everything else you do, I know you're the police chaplain, you're the pastor, but the bishop has decided you should be a vicar and you're the Could vicar for imagine? Catholic schools. 73 <laughs> years old. 73 years old, they made me vicar for Catholic schools. What are they, crazy? Well, what does that mean? What do you I, do? I try to just keep schools open. I find the greatest thing is to work with Tom Chazuko, one. Second, the part of it that's fascinating is to just work with pastors, trying to get pastors to see more and more that we have such a gem. Our schools, Ed, are a gem. And you can just see it. Before the, when we had the pandemic last year, we had 19,000. We're almost 20,000 kids this year because people saw what we can do and how we can do it. And we stayed open all last year, yeah. except for a few times when the governor closed us because <laughs> we were in the red zone. Right. But we stayed open and we did it. And we did it and we continue to do it. And you think of it, our principals dedicated, really dedicated people to try and promote Catholic education. So we work at it. And uh, I'm very proud to be the vicar. I mean, 
you know, I'm, I'm near the end, near the end of the road here, you know, on the road. We've got to keep, keep these schools open. You know? We're doing it. And We're of course, the, the, the tough part about Catholic schools is you have to finance and people have to pay tuition. Are you able to help some of the people who come in the, with the finances, with I, the tuition? I can, I can tell you many stories. First of all, during the pandemic, when people really were tight with tuition, I announced it on Facebook Live. I announced it whenever people were in church. You can't believe. Check for 4,000, a check for 2,000, wow. one. Second, the, my, my mother is deceased now since 2009. When she died in 2009, I said, in, in lieu of flowers, send money to, for tuitions. Mm -hmm. Well, every year I re-up it. And I send letters out to people to, that gave uh, uh, 15, 12 years ago, and they send it again. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of support. So uh, we try to, if there's a kid that honestly wants to go to a Catholic school, mm -hmm. I try to find the money. Beautiful. Thanks so much for your insights. We're going to talk to some of the pastoral ministers from the parish next, okay? Good yeah. luck. <laughs> okay. Good luck. <laughs> That's Monsignor Casado. He's the pastor here at St. Athanasius. And we're going to come right back and we're going to talk with some of the lay ministers. So stay right where you are. Welcome back to On the Block. I'm Ed Wilkinson, and with us now is Kenny Wojanowski. He's the coordinator for youth activities here in Bensonhurst at St. Athanasius and St. Dominic's, right? That is correct. At one time, you had a wider spread. You, uh, you were involved in the whole uh, group of parishes here in Bensonhurst, yes, right? That's where we started calling ourselves the Bensonhurst Cluster of right. Seven Parishes. Yeah. 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 But now you basically take care of St. Athanasius and St. Dominic's. Tell us a little bit about what some of the activities are, because I know it's a, it's a very uh, powerful ministry here in Bensonhurst. Well, it's gone through a lot of cycles with the pandemic, so we're actually basically restarting things. But basically, we, we follow the model of uh, outreach to young people from middle school all the way through high school, even into college. Mm -hmm. uh, so presently we have a, a, a bi-weekly youth center for high school age kids and the same for middle school and junior high kids. We do work with confirmation preparation in the religious ed program, as well as work with the academy here at St. Athanasius. When you say you have a youth center, what does that involve? The kids come, they show up, what do they do? Well, we create a welcoming environment for them, a place that hopefully they find to be a home away from home, where they start seeing the church maybe in a different light, and we try to meet them where they're at through games, activities, of course, trying to keep things socially distant and safe, but trying to be creative and getting them to be engaged in their faith, and also exposing them to the larger church. So hopefully getting kids to, you know, go to, you know, National Youth Days, going to World Youth Day, and hopefully getting them to realize that the church is a lot bigger than just this beautiful building. Yeah. You know, I think what most people say, they come to church on Sunday and they say, we're the young people. You know, where do you find the young people? How do you recruit them to get involved? Uh, well, it starts with getting into the schoolyard itself. I mean, we do run programs during the summertime to welcome younger kids and families in a playful environment, which hopefully starts building some bridges with them and their families that when they do get a little bit older, they want to come. Uh, literally, I walk through Cephalo Park sometimes, try to connect with kids at the local high schools uh, as well as I can. I mean, it's a, it's a, some years we get lots of kids easily and some years we don't. Mm -hmm. You have trips, the kids go on trips together? Or? Yeah, I mean, we, we do from Mets games to Yankee games. Uh, we brought 10 kids this year to a camp in upstate New York run by Young Life, which was a great experience to get them to the outdoors. In fact, a few of these kids, it was the first time they were out of the city, which was remarkable. Yeah, and there's also this community outreach over at St. Dominic's, right? Do the youth, young people take part in that also, with bringing the food to the hungry, things like that? Well, we've been lucky, yeah, with the pandemic, the need has grown. And of course, when the kids were, you know, a lot of them were remote, uh, we had a chance to get them more involved. So even through our religious ed program, the, the, as a community service outreach. So yeah, we've had kids that have been, were last year making meals after school in the gym of St. Dominic's. We, there was a group of kids last night at uh, St. Dominic's for Hope's Kitchen, which happens once a month. Mm -hmm. So young people do help out with it. Even our pantry here at St. A's, we have a lot of kids that come regularly on their own. Some do because they have to, but once they start uh, getting involved in outreach and realize how rewarding it is, uh, they do stick with it. At one time, most parish programs for youth involved sports. It was all sports. Is there still a sports component to this? Well, there is formerly CYO here, so there's still, you know, softball, baseball, basketball, uh, soccer, which are still big. 
uh, as long as things are permitted. Uh, but we, uh, we do try to have a, a, a playground environment in youth ministry as well as we can because we know kids are looking for a place to be. Uh, some parents are not comfortable sending their kids you know, to the schoolyard, but they're comfortable sending them to church. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we do try to bring that playful element to our program as well as you know, teaching them how to pray, teach them about the saints, teach them about our you know, faith. Yeah. So there's a lot involved in World Youth Day. You have to create enthusiasm, but you also have to find the money to get these kids. Because this is a trip to Europe this year, right? It's going to Lisbon. Portugal, yeah. Yeah. What, that, what do you hope to do over there? I mean, there's great, a lot of uh, possibilities over there in Portugal. Well, the first part of your question, I mean, it's, it's definitely not just a one-time event. We're talking this coming fall, we're going to start going to church, letting, inviting people, trying to build some excitement, and then literally for the next 24 months, monthly we'll start meeting to prepare spiritually, to prepare to create a sense of family, and also prepare for the practical opponents. Yes, fundraising's tremendous. We do stuff at each holiday. We're actually gonna have our first fundraiser on Halloween here, mm -hmm. since Halloween's a Sunday, yeah. to sell you know some tricks and some treats, and that money will go directly to start helping pilgrims out. I mean, in Fatima itself, I mean, in Lisbon itself, I say Fatima because Lisbon so close. The hope is that it's not just going to see the Pope. It's about a spiritual journey, about you know deepening your faith, your understanding, and doing it through full experience. I mean, uh, in Brazil, I mean, we had tremendous walks. In Panama, we visited religious sites and had these great experiences of faith that go back through centuries, learning different cultures, traditions of our Catholic faith that also enriched mine. Um, so I'm looking forward greatly to Portugal and hopefully we'll start getting some people on board. Yeah, it's an exciting, uh, it's an exciting trip. Uh, how important is that to create a sense of excitement to try to keep young people involved? Well, I've definitely seen World Youth Day really puts people on fire in their faith. I've seen catechists come out of this. I've seen uh, you know, youth ministry leaders develop and blossom from it. In fact, one of our last pilgrims is a DRE now of another parish. Mm -hmm. And I really think they have this great experience of the bigger church that, you know, unfortunately, as big as St. A's is with Monsignor Casado, I mean, to experience Pope Francis or, or Pope Benedict with a couple million people and just see so many young people on fire with their faith, I think alivens people here because our church is aging mm -hmm. uh, realistically in the pews but when they go to this they realize no wait a minute our church is young and on fire and even people of different cultures you know realize hey the church isn't just you know white old men it's not it's 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 dynamic it's young it's males it's females it's all colors it's yeah, beautiful absolutely thanks kenny for your work and thanks for thanks. coming by and uh sharing a little bit about the youth ministry here in bensonhurst so thanks for being with us and we're going to be coming right back and we're going to be talking more about St. Athanasius and St. Dominic. So stay where you are. We'll be right back. Welcome back to On the Block. I'm Ed Wilkinson and joining me now is Maria Luna. She's the coordinator for religious education here in St. Athanasius and St. Dominic Parish in Bensonhurst. Welcome to the show, Maria. Thank you so much. I know you have a lot on your plate here because it's, it's a big parish. We have two churches. And you also have a, a, a big school, an academy, and you divide your time between the school and the parish, right? So how, how do you juggle those two? How do you keep an even balance between the school and the parish? Well, um, I spend my, my week right here in the academy, which is perfect because my kids are students from this, this San Athanasius Academy. So it made me feel uh, like with my time get easy because uh, I, I divide my, my days between the academy and the CCD program. During weekends, I work between St. Dominic's and St. Athanasius. Mm -hmm. So this is amazing because I love keeping contact with families. This is how, how can I get um, a good communication and they, they feel confident when they come close to me. How many kids would you say are involved in this with the school and then with the parish at large? And the CCD program, we have around 460 students. Mm -hmm. And the academy, we have around 500 students. Wow, I think. so I, you're, I you're talking about close to a thousand kids, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And how important for them is it to, uh, you know, to, to, to pass on the faith? Now, I understand there are more and more Hispanics in the neighborhood here. Right. And 
Hispanics, they come with the faith, you know, they have the faith, but how is important is it that we begin to, uh, that we continue to educate them in the faith? It's really important because faith is too close for, for them. Especially, I can notice with uh, Hispanic families, they came from Mexico, Guatemala, Ecuador, and um, they get uh, their roots really strong with faith. Sometimes for parents, it's not easy for them to get involved because the the language, mm -hmm. and this is the first barrier. But this is amazing because we can offer the opportunity for them to continue, even though in, in the academy and this is the program. Um, they feel really engaged as a, I always say this is a teamwork between parents and, and, and us, like, mm -hmm. as a, a school. Do you have trouble recruiting uh, kids? I know a lot of Hispanic families coming to the neighborhood now, young families. Uh, how do you recruit them and get them involved in the religious education programs? Well, I will confess you something. Uh, we have more than 130 students in first grade wow. in this year. It's just the beginning, and they continue coming. So I can see after 2020, I can see the families get like more engaged with faith. Mm -hmm. You can see it reflects when, when they come here. It's more than 130 kids in first grade. I, my mind go through the next year, oh my goodness, we will have a lot of communions, and this is amazing. Yeah. My goal always is get more engaged from the teenagers mm -hmm. in all, all the things. And who teaches the religious ed, like when the kids come for, uh, for CCD on a Wednesday afternoon or a Saturday morning, they just say, who teaches that? You have volunteers? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Is, that, is that a hard sell? Is it hard to recruit those people? Or who are they? Well, I made announcements during during weekends after mass if they are interesting on being teacher. So they come with us. We explain to them they need to do the virtual training, and it's amazing because a lot of people, young people, they get really interesting to be a teacher. I have 22 teachers, um, right here in San Athanasius, mm -hmm. and most of them are students from college, students from high school. Um, I have uh, obviously we have uh, uh, teachers from past years they continue with us and it helps us because they show us uh, support and they guide us because mm -hmm. we are new in all these things. Now of course you know to send your kids to the Catholic school it costs some money you know it's not easy for a lot of uh, young parents to afford these these tuitions. Is the parish or is the diocese able to help finance some of the tuition to the academy? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, how does that work? Well, right here in San Antonio's Academy, we have two ways to get financial aid. The first one, it's the Casado Foundation. Um, this is amazing, because Monsignor has a big heart. Mm -hmm. He always open to, to everybody, to help everybody. And especially after 2020, a lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people lost their families, especially little kids. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I saw them how they get struggle during this time. So when they when they come with me and I explain to them, don't worry about the money. You will receive two financial aids. They said, oh really? You can help me? How, how can I get it? So, as I mentioned, one is a Casado Foundation. The second one is um, from Diocese, mm -hmm. Futures in Education. Mm -hmm. This is an amazing opportunity for them. That's why I invite them. Because on these days, people think like private school, Catholic school, it equals uh, too much money. Forget it, I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. But when they, they find ways to, to do it, they don't think two times. They say, okay, let's do this. Maria, tell me a little bit about the ambassador program and how that accompanies the families through the education process here. Since the beginning, when we invite them to be part of the CCD program or the academy, we try to, to, to guide them how or where they can get the uniforms, the supply list, um, where they can go for 
extra activities. Mm -hmm. Like I say, volunteers, they can, we invite them to be part of all these things. They really appreciate when you, when you follow um, during the whole year uh, and you give your attention, when you get a good, good conversation and they are, they really appreciate. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for sharing your insights about religious education here in the parish and wish you a lot of luck with it in the future. <laughs> thank you so okay. much. My pleasure. And thank you for joining us today for this little slice of life here in Bensonhurst at St. Athanasius and St. Dominic. Thanks for being with us and we'll see you again next time here on The Block. Right.